So walk the talk. Do what you say you're going to do. Practice what you preach. It's long been known to be important in leadership, management, and even parenting. Today what I'm going to talk about is uh, what's the science tell us about walk the talk? Um, there's tons of research to suggest that what parents do influence the children's behavior. Yeah, and so, well, that's part of what researchers do is that they study the obvious, I guess. Um, but I came across a few studies in the science, scientific literature, that I thought you might find interesting. One of them involves health, and there are actually tons of these health studies that suggest that um, health, healthy parents create healthy environments for, to make healthy kids, yeah? And so um, one of these is uh, around weight, and what they found was that uh, your 48% or 48 percent of the kids who have overweight parents become overweight themselves, whereas only 13 percent of kids who have normal weight parents become overweight themselves. And you may be thinking, as I was, well, there's clearly there's a genetic component to this, and sur surely there is. Um, but when you start to look at the genetic studies, what they find is that uh, genes are actually turned on and off by your practices, your behaviors, the foods you eat. And, and, uh, and so it's not all genetic. It's lo it's a lot of it's behavioral, a lot of it's environmental. I came across so many examples, I just had to share a few more with you. Uh, parents who buckle up their seatbelts have kids that are more likely to buckle up their own when they have a choice, twice as likely, as a matter of fact. Um, parents who use corporal punishment have kids who are more likely to use corporal punishment when they grow up, even though when you look into it, corporal punishment turns out really doesn't work. Um, people are still more likely to use it. And finally, um, parents that read a lot to their kids and speak a lot of words to their children have kids that read earlier and have a better vocabulary and speak more words themselves, yeah? Do better in school, all kinds of related things like that. So what I'm talking about here is people saying what you say and doing what you do. But it's not always that simple, right? Because sometimes we say one thing and do another, yeah? And I'm seeing the parents in the room nodding their heads right now because, yeah, as leaders, sometimes we say one thing and do another as well. A research study on this um, involved teaching kids moral behavior. And so how do you make moral decisions? And what they found was that no matter what the parent says, so they describe the proper thing to do, if they do something uh, opposite of that, then the kids imitate the behavior rather than the words. And so if you, if you, if you preach about how stealing is wrong, but then your children see you as having stolen something, then they're more likely to steal when they grow up or when they're kids, as a matter of fact. So in parenting, words and actions, when they don't match, uh, kids follow your, your actions. At work, it's a little bit more complex um, because you don't always have samples of what people are going to do. Sometimes you have to go off of what they're saying, and then you assume there's a correspondence between saying and doing, right? So a lot of times people uh, take the simple things to gauge that off of. And this is this, this perception, uh, this opinion of whether you think someone is doing what they say they're going to do is called behavioral integrity. There's a whole research literature on it, actually. Not just integrity, but behavioral integrity. It's your actions match your words. So what do people look for when they're deciding if you have behavioral integrity or not? Well, they look for, do you say what you're going to do? Do you keep your promises? Do your actions match your words? And so, you know, if, if it's difficult to tell what people are doing, they'll, as I said, have to look for the obvious things. So when we talk about this in our BMT Federation, we talk about showing up for meetings on time, starting on time, ending on time, um, holding people, holding yourself accountable to the same rules and expectations as you're holding other people accountable to. But wait, 
it gets worse. Not only is it difficult to do, we're really, we're kind of psychologically wired to be, to be insensitive to our shortcomings when it comes to this. So what I mean here is that when we think of our own behavior, uh, we're tuned to, uh, to notice the consistency between what we say and what we do. So we think we're really good at it. And furthermore, when we, when we see a consistency, we assume that it's because of our abilities, something that we did, we tried harder. We, we created that, yeah? I created that, that's why it's happening. Whereas when we are inconsistent with our words and our, our actions, we're, we're tuned to not notice that, to ignore it. And when we, do, when we do see it or it's brought to our attention, we're also tuned to think, well, it was an environmental factor. It was something beyond my control that caused that. Okay, so nature doesn't do us any favors in terms of getting better at this. And it's also true among others, right? So when other people, uh, when we're looking at the behavior of other people, if they're consistent, we tend to not notice that as much as we notice their inconsistencies. So we're tuned to see the inconsistencies in other people but ignore them in ourselves. The, the research on this suggests that when you behave with uh, integrity, or what people perceive to be integrity, so they believe that you, you're going to do what you said you're gonna do, it impacts their perceptions in positive ways, and it impacts their behavior in positive ways. So let's talk about the perceptions for a second. Uh, their perceptions of you are gonna be more positive. They're going to perceive you to be more honest. They're gonna perceive you to be more competent, and they're going to be more likely to trust you if, you if they perceive you as someone who does what they say they're gonna do. And we've already heard the, the topic of trust come up with General Sheehan in his earlier talk. And he also mentioned that it was a perception. So there's, there's a good deal of research on this. So it Im impacts the perceptions in one way, in positive ways. And it also impacts the behavior in positive ways. So if people perceive that you have behavioral integrity, they're more likely to do what you ask them to do. And they're more likely to show discretionary effort. So go above and beyond when you make a request. What's this mean to business? So we've talked about what it means to leaders. But what does it mean to business? Uh, the short answer is profits. But there's a, there's a whole series of studies that have been conducted on this topic. One of them caught my eye uh, in a recent study. It found that uh, they, they, uh, they examined the relationship between corporate values, published corporate values, and profitability, and they found no relationship. Whereas there was a relationship between what they called a culture of integrity and profits. And a culture, a culture of integrity was defined as doing what you say you're gonna do. In summary, yes, it's an old concept, but no, it's not inherited or genetic. It's not magical. You're not born with it. And yes, nature does get in the way of us improving, making it more difficult to improve, but no, uh, people, people can do this. People, people often do, and they do so by arranging their environment to get, to get the results that they want from themselves. And the prize is improved results, improved teamwork, and improved relationships. Thank you. <laughs>